evil creatures attacked the world and wiped out its entire population. The few survivors had to cover their eyes lest they meet their end. Sebastian and his daughter Anna in a barely lit basketball court, where Sebastian gifts Anna a pair of roller skates, and they share a moment in the light that sneaks in through the shut windows. Suddenly, a noise alerts them to another's presence, prompting Sebastian to quietly urge Anna to leave the court with him. Hearing a strange, metallic sound in the dark, they quickly flee in terror, but Sebastian is soon attacked and robbed by three blind assailants, losing all their belongings. Sebastian considers using a shattered bottle as a weapon but stops when Anna silently advises against it. After the attackers depart, Sebastian and Anna don black goggles and step into the outside world. The following scenes reveal the chaos that ensued after the world was overtaken by mysterious creatures. These beings could drive people to take their own lives with just one look, causing widespread destruction in no time. The only option left was to navigate the world blindfolded, avoiding the gaze of these invisible foes. This is precisely what Sebastian and Anna do as they traverse the ruins of the city, hand in hand, their vision obscured. They pause when another rattling sound echoes from afar, signaling potential danger or another challenge in their desperate quest for survival, in a world turned upside down by unseen monsters. Sebastian told Anna to stay hidden until he was sure the nearby survivors were friendly. Calling out to them, the survivors paused at his voice. Sebastian explained he and Anna needed assistance as they were out of food and lost. The survivors hesitated, discussing quietly among themselves. Sebastian then mentioned he knew the location of a generator due to his background in construction engineering. Asked if he was alone, he answered affirmatively. Suddenly, mystical whispers and a gust of wind signaled the creature's approach, prompting the group to quickly return to their shelter, with Sebastian following. Strangely, Sebastian was alone Anna was missing. Marshall, the group's leader, noticed Sebastian's injuries and introduced him to Liliana, their medic. Sebastian shared his ordeal with Liliana, asking her to keep it confidential. That evening, while dining with the survivors, Sebastian observed a man whose eyes should have been, were covered in scars. This man, unembarrassed by his scars, hoped they would serve as a reminder to the survivors that not all threats were supernatural. His scars were inflicted by malevolent humans who had embraced the creature's vision, insisting that others should witness them too. That night, unable to sleep in the bus where the others rested, Sebastian quietly left, taking every key he found before returning. Liliana woke to find Sebastian attempting to start the bus. Once it roared to life, Sebastian drove away from the shelter. The bus overturned and Sebastian emerged, revealing to everyone his fascination with the creatures. It was revealed that he belonged to the group the man without eyes had described. The man without eyes wept as Sebastian expressed his regret for their inability to perceive. Another survivor, now under the creature's influence, ignited the bus, leading to an explosion. Sebastian watched with delight as the spirits of the deceased survivors ascended, his previously enthralled eyes returning to normal. Anna then appeared, holding Sebastian's hand, commending him for releasing the spirits of the survivors. She described the allure of the realm inhabited by the enigmatic beings, and Sebastian inquired about when he might witness it himself. Anna comforted him, suggesting he would see it soon after he finished guiding those who were lost. Nine months before, Sebastian was an ordinary working father when Barcelona faced the invasion of the unseen entities that drove countless individuals to their demise. Sebastian picked up Anna from her Catholic school and fled through the chapel, where they encountered Esteban, a priest who embraced the creatures, believing them to be angels sent for salvation. Esteban left to witness these angels outside the chapel. Covering Anna's eyes, Sebastian found Laura, his wife, who tragically died in a car accident. In the current moment, Sebastian returned to the church to confess, then gazed with a smile at a dynamic painting on the ceiling. Roaming the city with Anna, they spotted a bus marked with an eye drawing. Investigating a noise, they found several deceased and one man alive but restrained inside the bus, who perished while Sebastian consoled him, claiming the creatures were indeed angels, watching his spirit rise. From a rooftop, Sebastian surveyed the city with binoculars, spotting a woman entering a pharmacy. Inside, he caught her attention, introducing himself cautiously to Claire. Suddenly, a dog tackled him, and its owners, Rafa and Octavio, appeared. Rafa confronted Sebastian aggressively, distrusting him. Sebastian fabricated a story about being attacked and robbed to gain sympathy and entry into the group, 
repeating the false promise of knowing a generator's location that he had previously made to other survivors. As the creatures drew near, signaled by the increasing wind and the dog's aggressive barking at something unseen, Claire, who showed more compassion than Rafa and Octavio, persuaded the group to bring Sebastian back to their shelter. Upon reaching their shelter, Sebastian was introduced to a couple, Roberto and Isabel, and mistook a young German girl, Sofia, for his daughter, Anna. Rafa questioned Sebastian about his identity and past, to which Sebastian claimed he was alone. Under further questioning about his injuries, he revealed his prior association with a group that perished upon encountering the creatures. He explained he had hidden when a band of men arrived, coercing the group to gaze upon the creatures. Sebastian described these men as seers wanderers of the earth without blindfolds, compelling others to witness the creatures. Just a short distance from Rafa and Octavio, Anna stood, appearing unnoticed by everyone else. Ignoring his daughter's suggestion, Sebastian confessed to everyone that his story about a generator was a fabrication designed to secure his admission into the group. Enraged, Rafa seized Sebastian, intending to force him outside without eye protection as a death sentence. The group's protests and calls for Rafa to calm down were interrupted when Sofia charged towards them, yelling in German. While the rest couldn't understand her, Sebastian responded in German, calming the situation as Rafa recognized Sebastian's unique ability to communicate with Sofia. Allowed to remain, Sebastian served as the translator for Sofia's account of her experience during the creature's arrival. She recounted being on a cruise ship with her mother, witnessing people leap into the ocean in panic. They escaped, her mother shielding her eyes, and when she could look again, they were in a van with paper-covered windows. Turning on the radio, they heard a broadcast about a safe haven in the mountains called Manchuk. Sophia mentioned a gondola that could transport survivors to a castle sanctuary, prompting the group to reconsider their reluctance to seek it out. Persuaded by Anna and Sebastian, the group decided to head to Manchuk, viewing it as a chance to venture outside. The following day, they set off towards their destination, finding a secure place to spend the night. This time allowed Sebastian and Claire to bond further, Continuing their journey, Sebastian was lured by the creature's melodies, prompting him to remove his obscured goggles. The dog began to bark, sensing the creatures, and the survivors started to hear the voices of their dear ones, coaxing them to unveil their eyes. Despite the dogs breaking free from Rafa and Octavio and running off, their bark still echoed back. Rafa, hearing his dog close by, blindly reached out for it, while Sophia was tempted by her mother's voice to remove her blindfold, though Octavio promptly intervened. Rafa, led by the cries of his dog, dared to lift his blindfold, only to confront the creature that seduced him into self-harm. The dogs returned, gnawing at his lifeless form, with one dog influenced by the creature to bite Roberto. Octavio then discovered a sheltered spot for them to regroup, signaling them with a whistle. They all entered, and upon securing the door, realized Rafa was missing. Octavio then elucidated his insight on the creatures their formlessness, ever-changing based on the emotional state, fear, sorrow, or convictions of their victims. Sebastian sat next to Claire, who was visibly disturbed after hearing her brother's voice. Noticing Sophia was missing, he found her weeping in a room and offered her comfort. He showed her his necklace, bearing a seraph angel, described as so magnificent that only God could gaze upon it directly. He handed the necklace to Sophia, who noticed the name Anna engraved on it. Later, Claire came to Sebastian, curious about Anna after spotting the name on the necklace. They were alerted to Roberto's agonizing groans and examined his infected bite, realizing the severity of the injury prompted them to search an abandoned house for antibiotics. Sebastian entered a room with an open window. Misleading Octavio upon his entry, Sebastian claimed the windows were shut, convincing Octavio to remove his blindfold, leading to his suicide. When Sebastian failed to see Octavio's spirit ascend, he snapped back to reality, staring at Octavio's corpse in disbelief. Claire overheard the commotion, uncovering Octavio's fate, and upon hearing her brother's voice again, she implored Sebastian to flee the scene. Anna had been urging her father to remove Claire's blindfold, but Sebastian, ignoring her, left the house with Claire. They returned to their hideout, where Claire attended to Roberto's wounds. Sitting on the stairs, Sebastian began to doubt his actions. The following day, as they navigated a narrow street, Sebastian noticed some seers lurking. A seer on a bicycle charged at them, striking Roberto. 
Isabel crawled towards him. Accepting their fate, they removed their blindfolds and shared a final kiss. Once in a safe spot, Claire removed Sebastian's goggles and was shocked to discover he could see. Overwhelmed by this and Sebastian's visible agitation as Anna appeared to him intermittently, urging him to save Claire and Sophia Claire and Sophia fled from him. They ended up on the rooftop, where Claire wielded a long antenna to maintain distance from Sebastian. Amid the creature's whispers, Claire swung the antenna, lost her balance and fell onto the scaffolding, rendering her unconscious. Sebastian, torn in witnessing an apparition of Anna bleeding, was conflicted about removing Sophia's blindfold, wrestling with his conscience. As Sebastian was on the brink of removing Sophia's blindfold, she questioned whom he was speaking with. Anna's image became more erratic, shouting at Sebastian, who then embraced Sophia, causing Anna's vision to vanish. Seven months prior, Sebastian and Anna lived with Esteban, who conducted rituals by marking an eye on individuals' foreheads, forcing them to confront the creatures. Sebastian comforted Anna with music during these episodes. On Anna's birthday, while celebrating, Esteban and his followers brought them to the rooftop. Esteban marked Anna, persuading her to look at the creatures. Under their influence, Anna leapt from the rooftop, leaving Sebastian to mourn her loss. Having seen the creature himself, Sebastian began experiencing visions of Anna, who urged him to spread their sight. Returning to the present, Sebastian revived Claire and proposed leading them to the tramway for the gondola. He shared his story with Claire, including his past actions and the influence of his hallucinations of Anna. Acknowledging his mistakes, Sebastian resolved to seek redemption by helping Claire and Sophia reach the gondola, aiming for the sanctuary of Manchuk. Sebastian defended Claire and Sophia from Esteban and his followers, creating a diversion by setting a vehicle ablaze to delay their pursuers. He encouraged Claire and Sophia to proceed to the castle, bidding them farewell before facing Esteban and his group. At the summit, Claire attempted to activate the gondolas. Failing initially, she rang a bell, drawing attention and inadvertently summoning the creatures with her action. The gondola eventually started, and Claire, reapplying her blindfold, frantically searched for Sophia, who was drawn towards the cliff's edge by her mother's voice. Claire managed to prevent Sophia's fall, embracing her and leaping into a moving gondola together. Sebastian overpowered the seers, but was injured in a confrontation with Esteban. Mortally wounded, he smiled, watching the gondolas carry Claire and Sophia to safety, reunited in spirit with Anna as he passed. Upon arrival at Manchu Castle, Claire and Sophia were welcomed by soldiers and other survivors, where Sophia was joyfully reunited with her mother. Claire was then taken to a laboratory, where researchers were developing an antidote against the creature's influence. In a separate, concealed lab, scientists conducted their 12th experiment on healthy rats using the blood of a seer. They placed the tested rats in a secure room, waiting anxiously for outcomes. A foreboding growl emerged from the chamber, intensifying as the restrained seer inside pleaded to witness the creature. The end. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Also, let us know what movie you would love us to recap for you.